I'd like to uh, to introduce uh, Professor Kim Lau back to I'd like to invite him back to the uh, the podium, where he is going to talk about uh, key climate po uh, uh, parameters from uh, from the SAR. And uh, as a uh, as a reminder, I guess uh, Kim is a professorial fellow, principal scientist at uh, at uh, DPI, uh, and uh, he wears dual uh, dual hats uh, within the, the CRCSI and also the Department of Primary Industries in Victoria. And I understand that those dual roles will be. Uh, we'll be seeing a little more of your smiling face at CRCSI in the near future. Uh, thanks, George. Uh, now, in the session this morning, I talked about where we are on the program with um, uh, agriculture, natural resources, climate change, ANREC. Um, now gives me a bit of an opportunity um, to drill down a little bit more into the project um, that uh, has been funded. Now, this project of operational monitoring of key climate parameters, uh, you'll recall that I said it's a little bit different. It, it's an outgrowth of an Australian Research Council project, um, which I'll explain. Now, I said that I do, um, I'm half DPI, I'm half CRC. Um, a week's got seven days, you've got to have something to do in your spare time. So, you know, this is um, what I do with all that spare time that's been allocated to me. So. The background on this project is the Australian Research Council last year or the year before, it, in, a, in a science scheme completely separate to the CRC, established uh, 100 super science fellowships. Now, the goal of these were to, uh, you see the quotes, to attract outstanding career, uh, early career researchers in three key areas, space and astronomy, marine and climate, <clears throat> and future industries. Now, when these were put up, Jeff Walker, who at that time was with the uh, University of Melbourne, put one up through the University of Melbourne um, to get, in fact, three fellows, um, these early career promising researchers. Um, he got a letter saying, um, congratulations, we're pleased to tell you we have funded you for two of those. And then he promptly um, went off to Monash University. Now. These fellowships are awarded to the institution. They're not awarded to the researcher, so they're not transferable. When Jeff had put up that proposal, the CRC had agreed to invest in these. Um, the fellowships come with salary component, but they don't come with any operating funds. So the CRC had looked at this and said, well, this is central to what we're doing. Um, if we as a CRC are, in fact, smiled upon in the next round and get our funding, we would like to contribute to this um, because we will then be able to work with some promising um, early career researchers. With Jeff going over to, to Monash and the, the fellowships not being transferable, the CRC frankly had to make a decision and say, well, we can either let go um, over a half million dollars over the next three years to fund promising young researchers, the type of people we want to work with, um, or we can find an alternative. My appointment is through the University of Melbourne. Um, it was worked out that if I was willing to step up and lose my weekends and do lots of stuff with my spare time, that we could, in fact, keep these um, fellowships. And that's what's been decided to happen. So this proposal, this project has not been funded in the standard way of going out to partners and pulling them on because there's already a core amount of money that is coming from the Australian Research Council. It's it's an opportunity for us um, that's quite strategic, but also just happened to come up. Um, the cash that's coming in from the ARC, external to us, is $556,800. The CRC is going to be putting up about $120,000 over three years, um, not every year, uh, but uh, $40,000 a year. We're also getting in kind uh, across this one professorial FTE uh, per year for three years. Now, what the research is all about is it goes to g towards biomass, but looking at it for synthetic aperture radar. So what we're trying to do is use in situ data that's been collected on the ground to get algorithmic mapping, relatively semi automated or semi-automated mapping of soil moisture um, and vegetative type, plus getting those 3D structural parameters for forests and for agricultural land. So we'd like to be able to address both the farmscape as aspect of things um, and also the forestscapes aspect of things. 
the research team, as you can see, is I've already mentioned Jeff Walker, but we also have um, Professor Jorg Hacker, who is over at Flinders University. I'm sure some of you know um, Jorg. Um, and then Professor Tony Milne and Lynn Lynn Gee, who are um, at the University of New South Wales. Lynn Lynn, when I came into the CRC about five years ago, five and a half years ago, the vision was to establish professors at various universities around um, Australia that would um, be partly funded both by um, universities but then also external groups. Lin Lin was one of those professors. So he was involved in the ARC proposal development of this. The fact that he's part of the CRC, um, of course, makes that um, quite worthwhile and sort of ties up a lot of things uh, for us. So the research is really about getting these fundamental structural parameters that we need to do a lot of the things that will drive um, the ANREC theme. Right. Now, with that, of course, even though this comes in as an academic proposal, a fundamental proposal, quite different than what we usually fund in the CRC, before it was going to be um, endorsed by the CRC, and the, the, the RIC, the Research Investment Committee, it of course had to fit. Now, I talked earlier about how what we're trying to do is better management of farmscapes, uh, delivering spatial information, high resolution 3D biomass uh, estimation, and then whole of landscape accounting and reporting. Where this proposal really fits in is in these two areas. So we're hoping that this will give us some of the fundamental knowledge that will underpin getting that better biomass estimation. It also is focused somewhat on soil moisture that um, is related to what um, Dave Lamb is doing in biomass business, which he'll talk about in the next proposal. Um, but it's also then really trying to address the better management of the farmscapes. Um, this is such a priority area for us that if we have more effort and different approaches trying to get similar information that are complementary, um, then we potentially will be able to, deli to deliver on those things. One of the things that has come up with this, with having this link with the type of things that Dave is doing, is we've both written into our proposals um, after the first year having a, a joint workshop so that we continue to make sure that we know what each other is doing, and already we've pulled in another partner that's working in the same space. So it's kind of growing a critical mass beyond the CRC that is leveraging a lot of the funds um, to great advantage for the CRC. So CRC benefits um, that we're looking at is with this Super Science Fellowship, it gives us fundamental research, and it really is quite fundamental research. Again, it's quite different than a standard CRC project that tends to be user-driven. Um, although we are making it user-driven, but it's fundamental research that will support three CRC projects that are up and going, largely in the ANREC area. Um, it is also complementary to a high-value contractual project um, that we have with the Department of Climate Change that I'll be talking about um, in another session uh, or after Dave speaks. Another advantage that this gives us is because the Super Science Fellowships are for fundamental researchers, it provides us within the CRC to really top young um, personnel. The people that have been recruited for this, one is an Italian um, who is currently at the University of Melbourne, another is a Romanian who is currently in Spain and will be coming over here. So that we really have gone through an international search for these people. Uh, we had about 30 applicants for these positions. Um, there were about six that I would have been delighted to hire any of the six. In the end, we managed to get the top two. CRC, like anything else, you run on having good personnel. This will recruit good personnel to us. Okay. The other thing, looking at it, is even though it's fundamental, there's quite a high, high resource leverage for us. If you look at the cash that's coming into the CRC relative to the cash that the CRC is putting up, um, for every dollar the CRC is putting up, we're getting $4.6 cash out of the ARC. If you then take the in-kind, for every dollar the CRC is putting up, we're getting $8 um, uh, cash in in-kind out of it. So it provides an awful lot of very worthwhile things for us. Right. So where are we in terms of activities and the progress on this is the fellowship was awarded, I want to say it was, we got news April of last year. 
um, or sorry, April of 2010. It started officially July 1st of this year. If we don't get our personnel in place by December 31st, uh, we lose the money. Uh, the personnel will be in place January 4th, and the ARCA said we can overlook um, four days of being uh, late. So our personnel has been recruited. They will be coming on. Um, the administrative arrangements to bring them on are happening. Recruitment has been completed. Current activity is, even though this is a project that is fundamental research, funded sort of as a, a classic academic research, one of the conditions of CRC funding, which is quite reasonable, is that we still have to have a project control board um, led by users. And I've started the process of um, recruiting those people. I've talked to people from Landgate. Um, I'm in the process of talking with people from DSE Victoria. Um, and I'm likely to talk to someone from DPI Victoria as well. If there are other um, user groups or users that would like to be involved in this, 43 PLers, state agencies, whatever, um, the project control board will be one that will be able to guide the science, and we will be looking to have that group push us in a direction that will make sure that even though we're doing fundamental research, it will be delivering things um, that will have the best opportunity of being used or commercialized by partners. So that's where we are on the project. Obviously, it's early days. Um, whenever you see that what we've currently done is taking care of administrative actions um, and the recruitment is completed, it always feels like, well, you really haven't done very much. But then those of you who have ever dealt with um, human resources in large organizations, you know that things tend to take a little bit longer than you would like them to do. So that's where the project is. That's what it's all about. So I turn it back over to you. Thank you for that, Kim. And I would encourage uh, those of you that uh, may have additional questions for Kim to, uh, to speak um, to him um, over, the, uh, over the lunch session.